What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you five of the hardest CRPGs. As someone who plays and reviews a lot of CRPGs and RPGs in general, and not only that, 100%s them, which often includes playing them on their highest difficulty, sometimes people are curious what I consider to be difficult, or games that were particularly challenging in some way, and today I thought we'd cover those, at least in terms of CRPGs, and explain some points about a few of those games that I thought were especially difficult. Though I do think it's worth mentioning at the start of this video that oftentimes when it comes to CRPGs, the order in which you play them will often determine what what you consider difficult, because a lot of CRPGs tend to work off of very similar systems and concepts, and once you learn those things and get the hang of them, it tends to translate very well to other CRPGs which will then be easier for your experience. Moreover, what each individual finds difficult will often be different for a variety of reasons, but again, these are the ones I personally had some trouble with, in some form or fashion. First up on the list is an interesting one. It is Pillars of Eternity 2, and a couple of months ago, I made a video about the easiest CRPGs you could play, and PoE 2 was on that list as well. So, obviously I haven't forgotten about it, so what's it doing on this list? Interesting story, because I do think it belongs on both. You see, when PoE2 launched, it was honestly super easy, especially on normal, but even Path of the Damned was very doable. And as such, it was so easy that the developers decided to do something about it. And because of this, they sort of rebalanced some things, they redistributed a ton of loot so you wouldn't gear up as fast, they just put unique items and things in other places along the map that you couldn't access right away. And then later with the expansions, they introduced some much tougher enemies and boss fights. However, that's not all. In addition to those things, they also introduced a series of optional challenges known as Magrin's Fires. And if you turn all of them on at once, this is known as the Ultimate, which is a hyper difficult challenge that to my knowledge, only about a dozen people have completed, as it requires you to do crazy things, which are pretty much only doable by a couple of classes. In fact, if I remember correctly, when it was initially implemented, some of the developers thought that it might actually be impossible. And while obviously not literally impossible, it's very close. And for all of those reasons, Pillars of Eternity 2 is, hilariously enough, one of the easiest CRPGs you can play, as well as one of the most difficult should you choose to make it so. And then moving on to our second entry, we have Tyranny. Tyranny on Path of the Damned can be a genuinely challenging experience, which is interesting because it's from the same developer, Obsidian, as PoE2. Probably the worst part of Tyranny in terms of difficulty is the first act, as in Path of the damned, you don't really have any gear or ways to get around that first act that you would later in the game. And as such, you kind of just have to make do with what you've got. And all of this culminates in a lot of fights where you're kind of just kiting enemies around until they die. However, the last boss of Act 1 is not a singular person, but rather a group of people. It can be a different group of people, depending on how you went about it, but it's a group of people. And this group of people outnumbers your team on top of being much stronger statistically, making this fight a real nightmare. I wiped on this probably over 50 times before I finally beat it. While the rest of Path of the Damned is challenging overall, for sure there are some fights that you have to really work out the mechanics of, the end boss of Act 1 is a nightmare, and it's probably the single most trouble I've had in a CRPG, period. To the point where when I finally beat it, it was honestly mostly just luck. The RNG finally just kind of went my way. I had one person left with like 10 health. It was a real mess. But that brings us to our number three entry, and this is actually Pathfinder Kingmaker. Kingmaker is interesting because it is difficult for a variety of reasons, not just the literal difficulty of the game. Now, if you're playing on Unfair, as you might imagine, the difficulty is a bit unfair. And unlike Wrath of the Righteous, the later entry, Kingmaker does not have nearly as many options to get around various things. Now, it can obviously still be done, and truth be told, if it was just the combat difficulty, it probably wouldn't be that bad. But what makes Kingmaker interesting is all of the kingdom management-related timers that are associated at the same time with the difficulty. Because now you have to deal with managing your kingdom, which requires regularly going back to your capital to take care of things. 
on top of trying to manage the very difficult combat encounters and planning all this. And collectively, those two things make up one of the most stressful gaming experiences I think I've ever had. In fact, so much so that when I finally completed it, other games and other challenges felt much more manageable by comparison. And in that way, I'm somewhat grateful for Kingmaker offering such a challenge because overcoming it has honestly led me to play and try a lot more stuff than I probably would have otherwise. And for number four on the list, we have Divinity Original Sin 1. Now, I have not actually reviewed Original Sin 1, but I have 100%ed it as I used to cover Divinity lore pretty excessively. So as you might imagine, I'm familiar with all of the games. And while a lot of people can consider Original Sin 2 to be a difficult game, I disagree. I think Original Sin 1 is much harder. And this is primarily because much like Kingmaker and Wrath of the Righteous, Original Sin 1 has much fewer options available to you than Original Sin 2 does. You still have a lot of options, sure, and if you really want to, you can just stack a bunch of barrels in a chest and one-shot everything, which is certainly an option, but if you're playing through the game normally, Original Sin 1 is quite challenging. And while the game is technically sort of open-world-ish, actually trying to go open world and do things in that manner isn't going to work out for you, as levels in Original Sin are very important. Being even a single level behind the enemies is going to be a very bad experience for you, which requires you, basically, to run through the game in a somewhat set manner, tackling one area at a time based on your level versus the enemy's level, as there is a relatively safe path through the game that way. But then, on higher difficulties, even that becomes a challenge. And if you've only played Original Sin 2, you may or may not be aware that Original Sin 1 lacks a lot of the polish and refinements of the system from Original Sin 1. The system itself is quite a bit different from 2, with various abilities being spread out across different trees, making them a little harder to find and lean into. All in all, making Original Sin 1 quite a difficult CRPG. But if all else fails, just throw everything in a chest and smack things with it via telekinesis. But that, of course, brings us to our final entry, and that is Underrail. Underrail is a challenging game. I don't think it's quite as hard as people make it out to be if you look into it, but it is very difficult, as it can be very unforgiving. As you go through pretty much the entire game solo, and you'll often fight large groups of enemies by yourself, meaning that you can't really control the action economy very well because you are perpetually outnumbered. And a lot of the combat and challenge of the game is finding creative ways around this. Now, a lot of people will tell you that you have to play through the game with specific builds and only specific builds can actually win, and that's just not true. I think it is a bit more open than people like to make it out to be, but oftentimes you'll have to find a solution that fits the build you are playing, because most any misstep in this game will often be lethal, and it's very much so a game of quick saving and trying something over and over again until you sort of figure out the correct way to handle a given situation as the game very much so can and will punish mistakes. But while the game is certainly difficult, it is nonetheless very rewarding as a result. Once you finally get a good build going and you understand how you would like to play and approach the game, it becomes a very rewarding experience to then go on and succeed in various situations as you slowly learn more and more of the game's mechanics and sort of unravel the rather complicated systems at play. But while most of these games on this list, I actually still would recommend to begin beginners if they merely turn the difficulty down in most cases a little bit. Underrail is not a game I would recommend to people who are unfamiliar with the genre. It is not a beginner-friendly title. It is a title that really benefits from you having played and understood CRPGs previously. But once you're ready for it, I definitely think it's worth taking a look at. But that, guys, is going to do it for today. There is our list of five difficult CRPGs. I hope you found it interesting and entertaining. By all means, let me know down below what you think about the list and any particularly difficult games you want to share. I am all ears, always looking for more games to play, things to check out, that type of thing. But regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.